and all over this place. Hallelujah. Come on, we're still standing, we're still trusting. Come on, the song says, I will trust. I will trust. scripture reading for this morning is going to come from the 37 Psalms. Psalm 37 and we will read stanzas 1 through 9. Psalm 37. And it reads Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord, and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he 
shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forward thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who are prosperous in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices, devices to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. God amen. bless you. Amen, amen. Thank you, Minister Sullivan. Thank you, Minister Sullivan. Good morning, Mount Zion. It is a blessing to be found together. You may be seated. It is a blessing to be found together today on this Lord's Day. Scripture says that this is what? The day that the Lord has made. And we are going to rejoice. Where are my rejoices at? I'll join in with you on that. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. What we're praying for this morning is that we would all be on the spirit of one accord. Amen. God gets the glory when we can be on the same page. Amen. So let's, let's pray for that this morning. A spirit of like-mindedness, a spirit of agreement, a spirit of being on one accord. Father, we come to you this morning, God, grateful. We agree, God, that you are good. We come with the same testimony this morning, individually and corporate, that there is none like you. God, we, we come with the same agreement and the same testimony, the same word of our testimony to say, Lord, that if it had not been for you who was on our side, we all agree. We don't know where would we be, but God, we know we're nothing without you. So, God, we thank you for being God, and we thank you for being God all by yourself. Sovereign and powerful, wise and mighty are you. God, we bless your name on today. Just your name alone deserves our praise. Just your name alone deserves uh, us giving you glory. Just your name alone is worthy. God, we come to you this morning, oh God, to gather together. We come this morning to, to join together with the same mind, with the same spirit, with the same heart, with the same faith, with the same hope. And God, that is that you would move in this place on today. God, we know, we know that you are already here. God, we also know that when we showed up because we are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled believers, we know that we also possess you. And when we came here, you showed up as well. But God, what we ask now is that your spirit will be made strong in this place. Let it be like a Shekinah glory to fall upon this place. We pray, God, for a fresh endowment now, oh God, upon each and every one of us that are here on today. Not only us that are here in the sanctuary, but those that are viewing. God, we pray right now, oh God, that you would endow us afresh, anoint us brand new right now, God, to serve you. Father, we come asking, God, that as you would move about this place, as you would move on our stream, God, we pray that you would heal those that need healing. You would mend those that need mending. We pray, God, that you would restore. We pray that those that need recovery, they would be recovered right now. We pray those that need redemption will receive redemption. But most of all, God, those that need salvation, they will receive it today in Jesus' name. And God, for those that just want to be better, God, we pray, God, that our lives will be changed for the better. God, I pray that your anointing will be, on, will be upon our music ministry this morning. Let your anointing be upon our deacons and our preachers, our ministry staff. Let your anointing be upon the laity, your people, God, your people, God. Let your anointing be upon them. Let them have your power right now. 
Father God, we pray this morning for our land. We pray this morning for the world, God. We need your peace. We need your love, oh God. For we know love conquered all things, even a multitude of sin. God, in a land that is so filled with sin, we know that your love can still recover us. We know that your love can still redeem us because some 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary, your love redeemed us. We thank you for your love that brought us back. We thank you for the blood covering that keeps us in right standing with you. So God, we pray this morning that everything would be done according to your will. Everything will be done according to give you glory. Everything will be done according to satisfy you. None of us, God, but all of you. For those that are praying, for those that are interceding, we pray that we would now begin to look in on our brothers and our sisters' need. We pray that even though we may not know the person sitting in front of us or see, may not know the person sitting behind us, what they're going through, what they're dealing with, we pray now that God would intercede on their behalf. We can't touch, we can't embrace, but God, we can intercede in the spirit. We can do battle in the spirit on behalf of our brothers. And we say, God, it's not me standing in the need of prayer, but God, it's our sister, it's our brother. We bring them before you, God, knowing that there is nothing that you cannot do. All things are possible to them that believe. So God, we come with a spirit of agreement this morning. We believe that you are God. We believe that there is nothing that you cannot do. We know that it is impossible for you to fail. So God, we believe that this morning. God, I pray for those that have come here today. I pray for those that are watching here today. God, grant them a great reward for seeking you. What we ask now is that we see you. We see you, God. So move about this place. Move forever in our lives is your servant's prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in praise and worship. Let us go forth.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible, the Bible tells us yeah. in the gospel ascribed to John that there was a woman at the well. Yeah. Scribed to be Jacob's well, but Jesus meets this woman at this well and there is a discourse about being thirsty. The discourse goes from talking about thirst to sin and immediately after they start talking about sin then the conversation goes to worship it's astounding that Jesus approaches this woman and asks her for a drink of water a woman in sin Jesus has something that she needs he has something that he wants from her. But he addresses the sin that she is in so he can get what he really wants from her in a more pure and holy way. Y'all ain't with me. It went from talking about being thirsty to addressing sin and then worship. Jesus says that, because the woman, the woman says that I worship on the ground that my father's worshiped in. Jesus tells the woman, you know not what you worship, but the hour is going to come. Because I have addressed your sin, you gave me something, or we talked about you giving me something that I needed, but because of your sin, you really didn't give me what was true and pure. But because I have addressed your sin, now, you can give me something true you can give me something pure you can give me something real on Wednesday night we talked about authentic worship on Wednesday night we talked about true worship on Wednesday night we talked about giving God pure worship the Bible says but the hour is going to come 
them that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth how many know we serve a true and living God how many know we serve a God that is going to address our sin that has addressed our sin that has already died on the cross is there anybody that came to worship him prayed for we prayed for a spirit of agreement this morning and I don't I don't know about you but matter of fact I don't I don't even I don't I don't know if there's anybody in here that would not say pastor I disagree I know there are people here on today that don't care don't care what it costs now you are aware of what it costs but that's not your problem because what Jesus did was something that you couldn't do anyway ain't nobody happy but me what Jesus did was something that you couldn't do anyway so the care and the concern about what it costs is not bothering you this morning you're just happy you're hallelujah happy that he paid it all and the all to him we owe I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin worship true worship true worship says God I don't I don't care what it what it costs because I couldn't pay it anyway all to you God I owe sin left a, a guilty stain but your precious blood washed me white as snow so God I thank you today God, I praise you today. I worship you today because I couldn't do it anyway. We got to move. We got to move. We, we got to move. But, but just, just for 30 seconds, 30 seconds, be in the knowledge that you have an audience of one. Your audience is not your pew partner. Your audience is not your neighbor. Your audience is not the ushers, it's not the deacons, it's not the choir, it's not the pastor, it's not the preachers, but your audience is God. And God, we lift our hands. God, we bow down in worship. God, we adore you today. God, you are our audience, you are our audience. God, we worship you. God, we lift you up. God, we adore you. God, we praise you. Here we are, God. Here we are. To worship you. Our desire is to worship you. In spirit and in truth. I don't know what worship look like to, looks like to you. But God is seeking such a, 
a worshiper. He's seeking a worshiper. He's seeking a worshiper. And while you have God's attention, while you have his attention, say, God, here I am. Here I am, God. I worship you. Not because of who I am, but because of who you are. Not because of what you did, but because of who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the depths of our being, hallelujah. From every fiber in our body, hallelujah. You are the God that we move by, hallelujah. You're the God that we have our very being by, hallelujah. Oh, my heart is full. Our hearts are full. If we, if we had 10,000, would not be enough, God. But with the one, with the one, that's it. Y'all already beat me to the punch. With the one, we say hallelujah. 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 Come on, not the whole thing, but hallelujah. 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 Come on, I ain't been here in almost four weeks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I came to worship him today. I came to worship him. I know you on, did too. I know you did too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make it sweet. Make it sweet. Make it sweet. Hallelujah. Make an altar right where you are. Make an altar right where you are. Lift up a sacrifice of worship this morning. best we could give him that's the absolute best Hallelujah. <clears throat> father we are here we are here God to hear from you Holy Spirit move now in this place Spirit of God fall fresh fall fresh we are waiting 
we are ready. Speak, God. Speak, God. Speak, God. The church, your people, want to hear. Want to hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37. <clears throat> Verses 1 through 1 through 8. Very, very familiar text this morning that is before us. But I believe this text is tailored to teach us something different. Ezekiel 37. Beginning our, begin our reading at verse number one, it says, from the NIV, it says, The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. This is what, this is what he's seeing. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw, somebody say, and I saw. And I saw a great many of bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. God, I need your help. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath into you. And you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling. And the bones came together. God, I feel you. Bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh. Somebody say, I looked. Appeared on them. And skin covered them. But there was no breath. In them. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them, skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. As we take our seats and rest from our feet in the presence of God, you know, this is my first time preaching to you this year. It's all right if we take our time. I got to get my wind straight anyway. But for the time that we have today, we want to talk about can we still see it? Can we still see it? You know, my brothers and sisters, hope, uh, hopefulness is an awful thing. When, when people feel 
like they're hopeless, they become demoralized. They become despondent. They become dejected. And often they become desperate. The future seems dark and dismal, offering them no glimmer of light whatsoever. Hopeless people feel as if they are in a no-win situation. Am I talking to somebody this morning? They feel like they're in an unchanging and unsolvable crisis. Well, people of God, the children of Israel were in a hopeless situation. A spirit of hopelessness gripped the Jewish exiles being held captive in Babylon. These Babylonians had totally destroyed their nation, including Jerusalem and the temple, and totally devastated their land. They had no hope. There was nothing to be hopeful about. But how many know with God, all things are possible. It was as they were a were dead as a people, having no to little value, having no purpose, no goals, no imagination, as though there was nothing more than dry bones. They thought that their situation was utterly hopeless, but that's not what God thought. The Lord's thoughts are different from man's thoughts. The Lord's ways are different from man's ways. God saw no reason for his people to feel hopeless. For he possessed the power to conquer what they were dealing with. This passage of scripture is an amazing text this morning because it's filled with hope. In it, God gives two signs that demonstrate his power to meet the needs of his people, no matter what they may be facing. Because see, the fact of the matter, it is, my brothers this morning and my sisters, we all have a valley. If, if you don't want to talk to me, just talk to yourself and just say, we all have a valley. And our valley has some dryness and deadness in it. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what, what your valley may be this morning. I don't know what your valley is this morning. But, but for some, it may be a health valley. I was in one of them. For someone, it may be a financial valley. I've been there. For some, it may be a relationship valley. Been there. For some, it may be a job valley, a career valley, a school or a college valley, been there. For some it may be a dream, uh, a goal, a hope, or an ambition valley, been there. For some it may be a peace valley, a, a joy valley, a love valley, or a trust valley. And all of the valleys that, that we experience, we can say they're dry and they're dead. But can you see it this morning? Can you still see you coming out of the valley? Can you see yourself uh, being restored back to life uh, this morning? And can you see it happening in the valley? Can we still see it? Now, now for many of us, we've made resolutions for 2021. Because 2020 was a valley for everybody. It was a pandemic valley. It was a frustration valley. It was a just downright disgust valley. But for, for 2021, we, we said we're coming out of the valley because for many of us, 2020, we said we were going to see things better and we were going to do things better. And we felt like because we were literally shut down, it didn't happen. But 2021 was supposed to be the one. 2021, we were starting back at the one. But some may say already we've lost loved ones. Some may say already we got, still got trouble in the White House. 
Some may say we're still hearing of killing and hatred and murder and, 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 and just all sorts of things. Uh, and some uh, have even given up on what they said they were going to do. But my question that I pose to you this morning is, can we still see it? Let's, let's, let's work. Let's work. That's what's work. Uh, the things, the things in the valley may look dead, but can you see it alive? Can you see your health alive? I'm asking you, I'm asking you, can you see your marriage alive? Can you see that, that relationship with that, that family member that fell off? Can you see it being brought back to life? Can you see your church back to life? Can you see your community back to life? Can we still see it? See, see Ezekiel was a seer. Thank you, Deacon Johnson, for what you put on the board. Did I call you? Did I text you? That's the spirit of God. But I did say when we concluded Bible study that we should be seekers. We should be wanting to be filled. I did say that we should be wanting to be seers. Ezekiel, my brothers and sisters, was a seer. But not only... For those that know anything about Ezekiel, he was not only a seer, he was a sayer. You know it took it. You know, you know he was one that was called to prophesy to the people of God about the things of God. You know, as Sister Martha, he was one that was saying things that were telling them how things were going to happen for them. He was not only a seer, but a sayer. Brothers and sisters, in the text, Ezekiel stresses the importance of being a seer. Running out of time, but, but it ain't our time anyway. Verse number one of verse 37, it says, The hand of the Lord was upon us and brought me out of the valley by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of dry bones, let me back and forth. I saw many bones on the floor of the valley. The bones was dry. Now what Ezekiel was saying was what he was seeing. Are y'all with me? Come on, if you ain't, at least act like it. He, he, he was saying what he was seeing. Now, if you give me a moment to just talk and maybe try, try to teach for just a second... Uh, what he was saying was what he was seeing, but he was not seeing this literally. He was saying what he was seeing figuratively. It was a vision. It was something that the Lord was causing him to imagine or to see. But he was not there while he was actually seeing it, this was something that the Lord allowed him to see. Hallelujah. And because the Lord allowed him to see it, it caused him to say what he saw. Now, now I want you to get it, Greer. Notice, he did not lie about what he saw. He did not lie and say that they were wet. He did not lie and say that they had life, DeAndre. He, he did not lie and say that, that they were moving about in the dry valley that was full of bones. What he said was what he saw. Can I deal with it this morning? In spite of, I'm early, I'm early. In spite of what it looks like, can you still say something anyhow? I, I, all I need is what? Four. I'll make five, but is there four of y'all in the midst of being dry, in the midst of having things dead in your life? Can you say, yeah, I see it, but I'm going to say something anyhow. Let's go, let's go, let's go. In, 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 in the valley, he had a vision. While, while he was in this valley, he had a vision about he and the people of God. And, and, and in the midst of the valley, I want you to know 
he, he, was, he, he was a part of this Babylonian captivity. He was not excluded or exempt from this. But, but he said that the hand of the Lord was still on him. See, see, that's what I want you to get. That's what I want you to get. This ain't my points yet, but, but, but this is something for free, right? In the midst of what it is you're going through, can you still say that you see God's hand on you anyhow? In the midst of whatever it is your valley is, can you still say that I see and I know God's hand is on me? Do I have a witness? He, 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 God gave him, gave him the ability to see that his hand was still on him. And I'm going to just tell you this. Uh, when, when I was dealing with, 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 with COVID, when, when me and Sister Smith was, was going through it, thank you for your calls. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your concerns. But can I just tell you, if that did not happen, I still knew that the hand of the Lord was upon us. See, see what it was, what it was, was, was God gave him the ability to see. And, and that ability to see is a direct indicator of that he was still in touch. And he was still in relationship. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what I'm asking. Can you still see you being in touch with God? Can you still see you being in relationship with God? No matter what your situation, your circumstance, or your valley may be. Smith, I know you're preaching in here. I know I am. I'm doing the best I can with the wind that I got. Here you go. Here you go. God, God, God asks us. He asks us, Ezekiel a question. And the question Deacon Mark Johnson was, can these dry bones, can they live again? Minister Sullivan, Brother Hughes, he asked him a question. Can these dry bones live again? Now, I got to tell you a question. Gotta tell, gotta, I got to tell you something. Got to tell you something about this question, Sister Lisa Penn. The question was not for God to get information. No, no, Brother Frederick. God already knows every answer to every question that may exist. Sheila Smith, got to, got, to, got to tell you, it was not because God did not know. Because see, God has all of the information no matter what the situation may be. The reason why, Sister Cassandra, God asked the question was so Ezekiel could have the right information Y'all ain't saying nothing about the situation. If I asked Minister Sullivan about something, I asked him last week, how did church go? How did the word go? He gave me information that I was not aware of about the situation. What, what God does right here is he does not ask the question to Ezekiel because he does not know. He asked the question because he wanted uh, to give the answer to Ezekiel. I want y'all to be with me. I want y'all to be with me. God didn't give him an answer. What he did was he gave him, Janae, revelation. Somebody say revelation. Can I just work it? Can I, can I just preach it like I feel it this morning? Because I feel just a little break on me. Okay, can I work it? Here it is. Here it is. A lot of times, we want, Sister Bobby, God to give us information instead of revelation. I'm almost to my first point. I know it's taking me a while, but I ain't preached in a while. What, 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 what we feel about information, it secures us about what our action will be about the information in regards to the situation. Hey. And, and, and what we want from God is all of the information because all of the information is going to direct our actions about the situation. But what God does about this situation is instead of him giving information, he gives revelation. Oh, this is about to shot me happy. I got to tell you this morning, don't, 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 don't look, don't look 
uh, point one, Taylor, point one, point one, don't look for God or don't look to see God's revelation and, and, and not God's information. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Always look for God to reveal things, but don't look for all the specifics. Don't look for all the details. Look for God to give you the revelation. But if he does not give you the information, will you still believe that it's going to happen? Oh, 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 oh. y'all ain't get it. Y'all slow this morning, but that's all right. The information is important to us because we like a lot of knowledge. We want to know how everything is going to go. But can I get your Bible this morning? Can I give you a Bible? God does not give us the information without the revelation because he knows that sometimes if we get too much information, we're not going to follow all the instructions. Psalm, Psalm, Psalm 32, Psalm 32 and 8, it says this, it says this, I will, somebody say I will, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shall go. I will guide thee with what? So what are you saying, brother pastor? I'm saying God is giving you the revelation and God has all the information. All you got to do is trust God that what he is telling you or what he is showing you is going to come to pass. Am I doing halfway decent this morning? Hi, 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 hi. So, so, so watch this, watch this. In the text, it tells, he tells them to, to what? To prophesy. Right, right? Are you with me? It says, prophesy, son of man. Uh, he said, he said that, that he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Son of man, thus say forth. Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. Now watch this. That's what the Lord told him to do. But remember, the Lord gave him a revelation tookie of dry, dead bones. So you telling me to speak to them, and they're going to come to life. Yes. Yes, some of us are not at the level yet, but we can all get there. Some of us are not all at the level yet to say something, even though we know we ain't going to see it. <laughs> it's dead. It's dry. But he says, Speak to it. Speak to it. Now, now notice, 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 notice this. Notice. He doesn't give him anything else. He just says, speak to it. Call on the four winds and speak to it. How many would? Ain't no hands up. Point two, look for God's clarity and not your concern. Can I tell you something? Robin, God don't care how mean you feel about it. Bailey, can I tell you something? God is not concerned how we feel about it. God only wants us to do what he says. But if you look for the clarity and not be so concerned if it's going to happen, huh, oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Look for God's clarity and not your concern. Right here you need to see this. This is, this is, what, this is what they call prophetic ministry. Now, I'm going to step on some toes. may not be in here, but it may be out there in the virtual world but a prophecy 
or prophetic word is not always about the future. Yeah, because we got these modern day prophets that in 30 days ain't knocking nobody, but, you know, uh, 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 in 90 days, you know, some of that is prophetic. Some of it is just downright pathetic. If you're frowning behind your mask, I'm sorry. But, 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 this is true prophetic ministry. Reason why, reason why, what's happening in the text is God is bringing clarity and interpretation about the present, not the future. Oh, ain't got no head of rub. <laughs> this is about to sound crazy, but, but just let me unpack it, Nana. Uh, uh, God is saying stop talking to the problem <laughs> start talking to the problem about me yeah yeah see, see a lot of times we, 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 we talk to God about the problem <laughs> but, but what God is saying is no start talking to the problem about me Man, what he said? He said, prophesy to the bones. Call on the four winds. You know what that is? Took it as the power of God. Yeah, see, 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 see. A lot of us won't be concerned about the situation, but God is saying, no, I'm trying to give you clarity, and the whole time you concerned. He said, I ain't tell you go out there and speak to him on your own strength. I told you to call on my strength. I told you to call on my power. I told you to rely on me. Go ahead on and high five. Air high five. Don't touch him. But air high five your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be concerned about it. Just ask God to clear it up for you. Just ask God to give you a better interpretation about it. So you would have a better understanding. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Oh, I feel good. Hit it. This is what I want to show you. I want to show you the difference between supplication and declaration. The difference between supplication and declaration. We all know that supplication is praying or talking to God about whatever it is we're dealing with, Sister Rose. Right? He said, make your supplication known unto God. Right? Yeah, that means you talk to God about what it is. Hey. Ah, Dan, I'm trying to keep it together. Ah. We spend more supplication. Yeah. We talk more about it to God then we do declaring that God got it under control <laughs> declaration is this gave y'all supplication didn't I declaration is you're talking to it about God let me, let me, let me, let me get it let me get it together Bible tells us that life and death is in the power of the tongue. I know I'm going slow. We're supposed to be out of here by now. But that, that, that was Sullivan, Julian, and Delaney that did that to y'all. What, 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 what we got to get is life and death. It's right here. God gave us this. God is saying, it's all right to talk to me about it. But at some point in time, you're going to have to start declaring what I said to you when you talk to me about whatever it was. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Won't God talk to you? Won't God give you something to say to it? No weapon formed against me shall prosper you be the head and not the tail above 
and never beneath. The head go and never beneath. He said, you'll be the lender and not the borrower. He said, you're more. Won't he give you something to say just when you need it the most? Do I have a witness? Oh, I got to get to point three. But do I have a witness that no God will clear it up just when you need it? Hey, God. It left me, but it's back. How many know I always got more, vo more verse than I got voice? I've been telling y'all that. Here you go, here you go, here you go. What you say, somebody say, what I say is an indication of what you believe the most. Watch this, watch this. We're going to get out at about 12. Faith is not denying reality. Huh. Faith is not saying it ain't real, sweetheart. Faith is saying it's real, but I'm hoping for something better. All right, all right, watch this, watch this. It says, 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 what we say is an indication of what we believe. It believe, faith is that it believes God to speak to it and to change it. Here we go. Here we go. God told him, Mark, call on the four winds. You heard me, Gwinnett? Call on the four winds from the earth. Now, Siobhan, hey, you up. He, he calls on, he tells him to call on the four winds because, Brother Byron, everything that exists has to obey my voice. Now, see, see Sister Joyce, everything, everything that exists don't have to listen to your voice. <laughs> but, but, but we talked about it on Wednesday. The earth is the Lord and the fullness Thereof, they and that dwell there within. Jamon, it may not look like it got an ear, but if God created it, it got an ear. And if it got an ear, it got to hear, oh Lord Jesus, what God said. Can I tell you this morning, God speak bone. Can I tell you this morning, God speak rock. Can I tell you this morning, God speak water. Can I tell you this morning, God speak fire. Y'all don't want to talk to me in this house. He spoke to the walls of Jericho. It was rock, but guess what? When he spoke, it came down. He spoke to the fire, and guess what? Elijah called it down. Y'all don't want to talk to me. He spoke to the water, and when Moses stretched forth his hand, the Red Sea had to part. He even spoke to the animals. Who did he speak to, preacher? He spoke to Jonah's whale. He told it, throw him up and spit him out on dry, dry land. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. I know y'all. Y'all time looking a little bit better. I'm going to push it up to 1145. <laughs> Ezekiel 12. Ezekiel 12. Ezekiel 12. Verse 24 to 28. Now look, 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 look. I got to give you this. I got to give you this. Got to get to it. Got to get it to you. Daddy say, give it to you. Got to do what daddy say. <laughs> verse, verse 24. Verse 24 says, for there will be, say no more, no more false visions. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, 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 <laughs> y'all all right? Okay, 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 okay. I got to do this. I got to do this. When, when I was studying, when I was studying, uh, I said, Lord, I'm, I'm, a, I'm only, I'm, I'm going to condense it. I'm going to shorten it up, but, but you know, God, God don't want no watered-down word. 
What I gave y'all, 24? 24 through 28, Mr. Southern, let me see. Watch this. In verse 21, he says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth? You know, a proverb is a word, yeah. There's a book called Proverbs, right? Watch what the Lord says he's going to do with that, with that word, with that holy word that's in your land where every vision failed it. Watch this. Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in your land of Israel saying, the days are prolonged and every vision failed it? Tell them therefore, verse 23, Thus saith the Lord God. Who? The Lord God. I will make this proverb. Would that cease me? Shut it down. Don't tell me what God ain't going to do or can't do. You ready, Jameet? Says, for, for there shall be no more any why would he say no more and then any? He's showing you all that stuff. No more any vain nor flattering divination within the house of Israel. For I am the Lord God. I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall what? Oh, hallelujah. It shall no more be prolonged for in your days. In your days, O rebellious house, will I say the word and will what? Is this good to anybody else but me? God is saying, I'm going to do away with that vain stuff. That stuff that you said ain't coming to pass. I'm going to do a word and I'm going to perform it. Let's run. Let's run. Let's run. Said the Lord God. Watch this. Watch this. We got two more verses. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel, the vision that he seeth, somebody say see it, is for many days to come. And he prophesied of the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, there shall None of my words be prolonged anymore. What is that saying, DeAndre? That's saying what he said is about to happen. It ain't going to be in the future. It ain't going to be next year. It's about to happen now. Can somebody say now? Watch this. Can you see in 2021 everything? That God said to you, he was going to do. Can you see him doing it right in this year? Ah, that ain't fooling me. Can you see him doing it in the midst of a pandemic? I want to know. I want to know who I'm around. I want to know who I'm dealing with here. Can you see him doing it in the midst of a valley? You ready? Can you see him doing it when things are dried up? Can you see him doing it when things are dead? The Bible says there's going to be no more days. No more prolonged days. How many of y'all been held up in denial because it's the, things have been delayed? How many of y'all thought you've been denied because it's been delayed? God is saying no more delay. No more denial. It's about to happen. But can you see it? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, God. All right. All right, y'all. Time looking a little bit better. I'm going to bump y'all up to 11 o'clock. Point three. Point three. Point three. Hey. <laughs> Look for God. <laughs> Look for him to move and work in increments not incomplete. 
Did you just read what you, did you, did you just understand what you read? God is saying no more of them days where you waiting on it. It's about to happen. But you got to understand that I work by time. Uh, Chase said something the other day, and I don't even know if the brother realized what he said. The other morning I had him sat down, you know, watching the inauguration, because that's history in time. That's an important mark in history. They weren't worried about it. They ate their Fruit Loops or whatever, Frosted Flakes or whatever it was, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and they was rambling, running and rambling all through the house. But then he comes and says, Dad, it don't matter. Time don't matter anyway because we do the same thing every day. Five. Don't we do the same thing day after day? But what's important about time is Time marks when important things happen and us doing things day after day. Do you not know God said there's going to be a time uh, where I'm about to move by my word? So, so here it is. Look for, look for God to move and work in what? Increments and not and in incompletion or not incomplete. Here you go, here you go, here you go. The Bible says, oh, I got to get back to where I was. The Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 37, he says, So I prophesied, verse 10, as I was commanded, 37 and 10, y'all with me? And the breath came in them. Watch him work incrementally. The breath came in them. The breath came in them. But what did he say was going to happen? He said they were going to come to what? Come to life. (laughs) Watch, Watch the word work. He says, came into them and they lived and stood up. You know the preachers talk about the foot bone connected to the ankle bone. The ankle bone connected to the leg bone. Leg bone connected to the knee bone. Knee bone connected to the thigh bone. Thigh bone connected to the hip bone. Hip bone. Connected to the backbone. Backbone connected to the shoulder bone. You know it. Can I tell you that all took time. So here Ezekiel is saying, okay, Lord, I did what you told me to do. But you, 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 you taking your time with this. How many know you can't rush God? But you got to just still hope to see it happen according to his time. How many know God is never late? Y'all ain't with me? How many know God is never early? How many know my first sermon that I preach is God is always on time? Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Understand, God is going to do just what he said. He spoke to the bones, and the bones began to come together. But, but, but watch this, watch this. <laughs> yeah, the Bible says that they were an exceeding great army. Y'all know how much time it takes to put together just one body? And get one body to do right. You know how long it takes for you to get yourself together. Uh, I'm coming. When I when I first became pastor, almost eight years now, it's things that I wanted to see for this church. I still don't see. But guess what? 
is coming. I don't see what I used to see, but I do know what I expect to see is on the way. How many know me and Sister Smith been married, give it to me, 19 years, almost 20. I don't see what I used to see. And I don't see what I want to see. And I know she don't see what she want to see. But baby, do you know it's coming? Y'all ready? In the city of Donaldsonville, I don't see what I want to see. Mayor, visionary, you may not see what you want to see. But you better believe, brother, it's coming. Can I help you, child of God? You may not see in your life what you want to see. But thanks be to God, you don't see what you used to see. I don't know what key I am, but catch me. Here it is. We all know that we don't see what we want to see in our health, in our finances, in our family, in our community. Y'all time looking a little bit better. We about to get on out of here. In our nation, in our country, in our world. But thanks be to God, it ain't what we used to see. Can we still see our families getting better? Can we still see our marriages getting better? Can we see our finances coming together? Can we see us living in a land that's not full of hatred? Can we see us living in a land that's not full of jealousy? Can you see yourself living, living better? Well, I close here. Ezekiel, remember, it was figurative. It wasn't literal, meaning it really was not happening. But what God did was God gave him a vision of what could happen. Here it is. You may be saying, preacher, that, that shouted me happy. But when I go home, I got to go back home to a valley. You may be saying, preacher, when I go back to that job on tomorrow, when I go back to the place where that, that there's deadness, that there's drying, I'm still in the valley. Can I tell you something? Still, rejoice still hope to see it come together just like God said it would now if you read further God affirms his word and that's what he'll do he'll affirm it he'll make it come to pass here it is God only wanted them to see better because he knew it was going to take time before it got better. Here's your word. Here's your word. I don't care how bad it gets. You see it better than it was. We don't know what's going to happen next month. But you see yourself better than you were last year. In February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And you may find yourself back here. Again, making the same declarations, making the same supplications, looking for God to do more. But guess what? Still be a seer. What, what happens is, what happens is, when a person loses their ability to see, they, they sometimes lose their, their vision. Am I right? But when you talk to most people that have lost their ability to see and have lost their vision as a sense or as a, as a, as a part of their sight, what they have not lost is their imagination. Can I talk to you? I'm closing your time, looking a little bit better. Ne never lose your ability to see. God wants you to see yourself on top even when you're on the bottom. God wants you to see yourself better even when it's bad. 
God wants to see wants you to see yourself healthy even when you're sick. Can you see yourself better? We close here. We close here. Your time is really good now, isn't it? I was joking when I said Sullivan, Julian, and Delaney set y'all up. Those brothers did well in their assignment, but I ain't preached to y'all in almost four weeks. I had something to say. And I said what I had to say. Told, told my wife this morning, I said, baby, I got, I got so much to say. Well, she said, well, say it. So you know what Boo and Bay say, say it. They got to get saved. Mark said, bless him, Lord. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. Y'all pray for me. Closing here, closing here. God wants us to see better, even if it's bad. Prayer is this, Father, in the name of Jesus, we know, God, that everything is at the obedience of your voice. We know, God, that things take time. We know, God, that things have to happen according to your word and according to your will. God, I thank you for working in increments because, God, there were some things that I just wasn't ready for last year. I thank you, God, for moving by your own time because there were things that I just what I was not ready to attain just yet. But, God, my prayer is this. Everything that you have for me, I'm going to say it until I see it. God, I'm going to seek it. And seek you until I get it. So God, I already see my help being better. God, I already see my family being better. I already see the lives of my brothers and sisters being better. God, I see my church better. I see the community that we're in better. I see this land better. I see our world better, God. But God, do it according to your time do it according to your time what I pray for is that we would have the patience we would have the perseverance we would have the long suffering but most of all God grant us the faith to see it until it comes to pass in Jesus name amen if there is one if there is one that is here today or that is viewing today that is without salvation, if you have never accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior and you have a desire to do so today, if you've never been baptized, if you've never had an opportunity to publicly profess your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, if that's your, if that's your desire, you can come now. You can come now. If you are already baptized, if you have already accepted Christ but somewhere somewhere along this life's journey fell off what we say backslided but what it really is you fell out of connection you fell out of relationship with God if you have a desire today to restore your relationship how many know God is a restorer just as he's a redeemer he's a restorer if, that, if that's you today in the sanctuary or on, on the stream, we ask that you would just put it in the chat. Put it in the chat, the decision that you make today. If it's you in the sanctuary, I ask you to come. I ask you to come. If, if you have a desire to make this place, this sacred ground, this holy place that has been called Mount Zion, if you have a desire to make this place your place of worship, this is only where we gather this is only where we gather to grow, but this is a place that we go from. If you have a desire to make Mount Zion your place of worship, if you feel that God has placed you here or positioned you here, I want you to come. If you're in the sanctuary, I want you to come. If you're on the, on the stream, I want you to just put it in the comment section, the decision that you make today. What we offer is we offer salvation. We offer a chance to recommit or rededicate your life. And we offer you a place to worship. And the question is, is there one? 
is there one. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Before we get to communion, we're, we're going to commune, but before we get to communion, I just want to say that, that I, did not, I did not do the opening. I did not do the opening, but we want to remind you of your tithes. We want to remind you of your offerings. Uh, there's many ways to give. Uh, first, if you see it on the screen, if you're watching, uh, our first way to give is Givelify. What Givelify is, it's an app that you can download on your Android or your iOS device. Download it, find Mount Zion of Donaldsonville. Simply, once you find Mount Zion of Donaldsonville, tap and give whatever it is the Lord puts on your heart. Now, what I want 2021 to be for you, what I want 2021 for you, for you to be is that it would be a year that you are faithful, 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 faithful. Now, now, what are you saying, Pastor? Yeah, I'm talking about you giving, but I want 2021 to be a year where you are faithful in every area of your life. I'm talking about no slacking. Faithful in your giving, faithful in your serving, faithful in your time with the Lord. I'm talking about faithful, faithful, faithful. Amen? All right, so, so another way to give, if, you, if you're here in the sanctuary and you did not uh, drop off in the, uh, in the back, do we have the buckets yet? Did we bring the buckets? No? Okay, but there, there's a basket. As soon as you enter the sanctuary, drop your tithe, drop your offering, drop your seed or whatever it is. Uh, you want to label it or title it as. But, but I want you to honor God. I want you to be faithful this year in honoring God. Amen? You can do that, or you can mail it, or you can mail it if you're watching. For those that are watching, be, be patient with me. For those that are watching, our address here at Mount Zion is 808 St. Patrick Street, Donaldsonville, Louisiana, zip code 70346. Three ways to give, three ways to give. You can mail it, you can drop it off, or you can uh, do it virtually on Givelify. Amen? Our vision, our vision, our vision here at Mount Zion is we are what? We are a progressive church. We want to be progressive, right? We don't want to be doing the same thing over and over and over again. We want to progress as a church, as a body of believers. We do that. We do that how? By proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? And in doing all of that, our ultimate goal is is that we are pursuing the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to proclaim the gospel. Uh, we want to pursue the kingdom. And ultimately, we are that progressive church. All right. Uh, just, just, just a few things before we commune. Uh, Reverend McKinney uh, called me the other night and we had a good talk. He, he expressed to me on how he was recovering and how he was coming about. Uh, and he said, Pastor, do one thing for me. Give the church my love. Give the church my love. Sister Yativ, I actually was able to talk to her um, uh, just before Bible study, but because of the time that we have on our conference call for Bible study on Wednesdays, I was not able to give the message to you all, but we give it here in sanctuary and publicly. Uh, she said the same thing. Pastor, it's been a process, it's been a road, it's been a journey, but I am on the right road of recovery, and I give the church my love also. Amen? Many may not know, many may not know, but as myself and Sister Smith was dealing with COVID, Sister, Vic, um, Sister Sullivan, I'm sorry, don't beat me up, brother. Sister uh, Sullivan was dealing with it as well. Uh, we, we prayed for her, she was praying for us. She was recovering. Sister Daphne Landry, affectionately known to us as Dee Dee, she was dealing with it also. Um, who else? Who else? Uh, Brother Nathan and Sister Pauline Williams, they were dealing with it. So, so uh, COVID is still real. Just because there's a vaccine and a vaccination out there, don't think that it makes you bulletproof, right? Uh, it's still real and it's still out there and we need to act as such. We need to act as such. So continue to pray for those brothers and sisters. We thank you all, myself and Sister Smith. We really thank you for all the love, all the concern. Uh, it, wasn't a, it wasn't worry. It was just being concerned about your leader, concerned about 
your first lady, and we thank you all for that, all right? I say publicly, I thank my family. I thank my immediate family for stepping up in the ways that they did. Yeah, they was throwing stuff at the front door. No, nah, I'm joking. But, but, but they, they stepped up in a mighty, mighty way for us. And I say publicly, thank you all so much for what y'all did. And just once again to you all, Zion, thank y'all for the phone calls, the texts, the prayers, even the ones that couldn't come through. Sister Mary said, Pastor, I ain't knew your number, but I was praying for you. I was praying that I saw my pastor back in that pulpit on a Sunday morning. I won't hear you on the phone. All right? And God answers prayers. Amen? Amen. Am I forgetting anything before we move into communion? Who's that? Who? Oh, brother, brother Bruce had it too? Yeah, correct. Okay. Also, pray, we're praying for Sister, um, Sister uh, Patricia, Sister Pat, Brother Mark's wife. We're praying for her. She had a surgery. She's recovering. Keep Sister Deborah, Sister Deborah Williams in your prayers. She had surgery on Thursday. We, we lift her up. We lift her up. Amen. So, so we are going, we are going to move into our communion. Does everyone have their, their uh, sacraments? Does everyone have their elements of communion ready? If you don't have one, we'll give you a moment to get you one. If you need time to get it ready, we'll, we want to be on one accord this morning. Amen. Y'all time looking good. Y'all time looking good. McDonald's still serving breakfast. Y'all good. Y'all good. Y'all good. We're ready. Amen. The Bible says that it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed. Now we have to remember that Jesus had already made up in his mind that he was going to Calvary's cross with or without the betrayal. But he was betrayed by those whom he loved. He still had a desire to sup with them. He still had a desire to share with them. What we do now is, the Bible says that Jesus took the bread, he lifted it up, he broke it, and he gave thanks. He said, he said to them, he said, this, this bread is my body. As often as you eat of this bread, do it in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. Thank you. Bible says that then he took the cup in that same manner he lifted it he blessed it he said unto them this cup is the new testament of my blood as often as you drink for drink of this uh, he said as often as you drink from this do show for my death until I come again let us drink and in it all we do it what in remembrance of him amen 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 well, we have praise, we have worshiped, we have received the word, we have communed. Uh, one more thing, get my, my phone, Chase. Son, bring that his phone. Thank you. All right. Uh, all men, all men being asked to meet Brother uh, Jamon Johnson in the parking lot after church. All right. You voting me out, Doc? <laughs> all right. Meet, meet, uh, meet, meet Brother Jamon Johnson. All men, all men meet Brother Jamon Johnson in the parking lot after church. All right. Well, I am ready to dismiss. I don't know of any. I don't know. I'm sorry. I didn't I don't I don't know of any. Anybody celebrating a birthday. Thank you, Sister Rose. Anybody celebrating a birthday? If you are, happy birthday. I'll get them, I'll get them correct next week. All right. All right, let us let us stand. Let us stand. I can't hear you, sister. Who's that? Sister Rosie Smith. Last month? Last Monday, okay. Happy birthday, Sister Rosie Smith. Last Monday. Happy birthday, 
Happy birthday, Sister Rosie Smith. Thank you, Sister Penn, for that. All right, all right. We are, we are about to dismiss. I, it, it has been an absolute pleasure to worship with you today. Uh, I really, really did not uh, expect to be uh, fully back. But thanks be to God, amen, who gives us power and who has already given us the victory. This is our blessing. This is our prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that whatever it is that we go through, we would see you bringing us through it and we would see ourselves better. God, we ask that the power of the Holy Ghost, we ask that the communion of the Holy Ghost will be upon us now, henceforth, and forever. Let all that agree said, amen. Do this for me. Have a blessed day. Do this for me. Have a blessed week in the Lord. God bless you and I love you. God bless. God bless.